good morning or good night. I guess it all depends on how your Saturday night went. I'm Eddie Muller, and welcome to Noir Alley. In 1946, producer Mark Hellinger scored his biggest hit yet with The Killers, an inventive and expansive adaptation of the Ernest Hemingway short story. It marked the Hollywood debut of Burt Lancaster, whom Hellinger always took credit for discovering, and the pairing of the hunky actor with sexy Ava Gardner inflamed the public's imagination and launched them both on meteoric careers. Everyone was eager to see what Hellinger would do for an encore. Well, it was sensational, all right, but it was certainly not what anyone expected. And it's that encore we have for you today. Brute Force, released in 1947, a year after The Killers, and again starring Burt Lancaster. Now, Brute Force came about when Hellinger, who'd been a brash and flamboyant New York newspaper man before trying his luck in the movies, invited into his Hollywood office an ex-con who was looking for work. Bob Patterson had been a promising reporter who'd gotten convicted of check forging and served a stint in the Louisiana State Pen. Instead of begging for a handout, Patterson asked Hellinger for a job, and the producer humored him, loaning the ex-con a spare room and a typewriter and paying him a weekly stipend. In no time, Patterson had created the story that would become Hellinger's follow-up to The Killers. Richard Brooks, who along with John Huston had uncredited written the script for The Killers, turned Patterson's story into the screenplay. The original title was Eight Men, and it told the separate stories of how each convict in cell R-17 had ended up in Westgate Penitentiary. And in pure noir fashion, Every tale of woe centered around a woman, as per Hellinger's explicit instructions. Bottom line, brute force was clearly a vehicle for Burt Lancaster, given how often he appears on screen without his shirt. Nothing's okay. It never was and it never will be. Not till we're out. To direct, Hellinger chose fellow New Yorker Jules Dassin, who up until then had labored unhappily in the B unit at MGM. And Dassin was fed up with Hollywood and was plotting a return to the New York theater when Hellinger picked him for this project. It turned his fortunes completely around. Not that Dassin cared much for the script, which he felt was silly in its depiction of the women and simplistic in making all the prisoners innately innocent. Now, regardless of his disdain for the script, Dassin knew this was the last chance to make his mark, and he directed the hell out of this picture. I can only imagine how brute force hit moviegoers on its release, considering that it contains scenes of violence still shocking today. But given that the cast comprises a cattle call of the meanest, toughest SOBs in Hollywood, perhaps the biggest shock is that the worst of the lot, the sadistic Captain Munsey, is played in chilling fashion by normally mild-mannered Hume Cronin. It's a performance unlike anything else in the actor's long, illustrious career. And if you only know Cronin from things like Shadow of a Doubt and Cocoon, brace yourself. Now, Richard Brooks was always politically motivated as a writer, and he wrote Brute Force at a pivotal time in American history. The raging authoritarian confluence of Nazism, fascism, and communism was swirling around the world. And no one can possibly miss how Brooks turns a simple prison yarn into an existential parable of innocent men crushed by a totalitarian regime. Now, Dassin had been a left-wing radical back in his Yiddish theater days in New York, and neither he nor Brooks was hesitant to hurl social commentary like the prisoners hurl Molotov cocktails. Burt Lancaster called the film larger than life and very potent. Now, as for Dassin's complaints about the men being too innocent, well, since when do cons ever tell the truth about how they landed in stir? To me, it doesn't matter one bit if the boys in R-17 are telling the truth or lying through their teeth to appear more noble. Either way, they're fed up with being treated as less than human, and they are dead set on busting out. So strap yourself in. You are about to serve time a harrowing 98 minutes of it, with the most violent studio movie ever made in Hollywood. From 1947, this 
is brute force. 